lots of things to see in space and amazing planets to learn about too. But how do we get there? Do you know? How far can we travel? Do you know? Can you dress like an astronaut, look up at the moon, take off like a rocket, or build a robot with special cameras to help us see? I'm Maddie and I'm at the Space Centre where we can learn about space and all the planets in our solar system, including planet Earth, where we live. Today I'm finding out how we travel to space. Do you know how we get to space? Ignition. That's right, we travel to space in rockets. A bit like this one. And lift off. Other things are sent into space too. Like satellites that help our computers and mobile phones connect to each other back here on Earth. And the people who travel in rockets to explore space, they're called astronauts. Astronauts started flying into space more than 60 years ago to try and reach the moon. Today, from launch, it takes just eight minutes for a rocket to leave Earth and get to space. That's very, very quick. But how does a rocket launch and get into space? How does a rocket work? Let's find out. Rocket. lots of different types of rockets and they can be different sizes but they're usually the same sort of shape. They're very tall, quite long and slim and shaped a bit like a kitchen roll tube. We call this shape a cylinder. And rockets have a very powerful jet engine called a rocket engine. Have you ever built a rocket? I built this one. Rockets are made up of parts called stages. This one has three stages. One, two, three. The stage at the bottom is called the first stage and it's full of fuel. It has the most power because its job is to get the whole rocket off the ground. Three, two, one, blast off! When the rocket is in the air and all the fuel inside the first stage has been used up, it's finished its job, so the rocket drops it and the first stage falls back down to Earth. Bye bye first stage! Then an engine in the second stage starts up and takes over. The second stage is also full of fuel. The rocket continues to travel until all the fuel in the second stage is used up. What do you think happens then? That's right, the second stage is released and it drops back down to Earth. At the top is called the fairing and it's where the astronauts sit inside. It's the part that looks a bit like a pointy hat. But inside the upper stage is a spacecraft which has special computers on board that guide it through space. The upper stage is now ready to take the astronauts the rest of the way into space. But where do rockets launch from? Rockets take off from launch pads at places called spaceports. People who use computers that link to computers inside the rocket are called flight controllers. They also have radio systems so they can talk to the astronauts inside the rocket even when it's in space. Hello astronauts, this is the spaceport. Can you hear me? Hello spaceport, this is the rocket. We can hear you loud and clear. The time before the rocket launches is called the countdown. 
The countdown can last four to five days as the rocket gets ready to blast off into space. But right at the very end, the spaceport counts down from 10 to 1. Can you do the countdown with me? Here goes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have lived off! <laughs> wow. I wonder what it's like for the astronauts inside the rocket. Inside the top pointy part of the rocket, the upper stage, is the special spacecraft which the astronauts sit in to get into space. And there's one up there. This one is from a Soyuz rocket, and the bit the astronauts sit in is the middle part. The part of the rocket that astronauts sit in for liftoff is called the descent module. It's only 2.7 metres wide, and only three astronauts can fit inside it. 2.7 metres. That's from here... ..to here. One metre, two metres and 70 centimetres. Two metres and 70 centimetres. Wow, imagine three astronauts and all of the computers packed inside a space this big. Oh, wow, you're sitting close. Is this your first time inside a rocket? Yeah, it is. Did you know it can take up to two days to get to the space station? Wow, imagine two whole days sat together like this. I think the astronauts must become very good friends. When I think of astronauts going into space, I always picture them wearing their spacesuits. And I've got special permission to try a copy of this one on. Whoa, this is brilliant. It's a copy of a pressure suit. Pressure suits help to keep astronauts safe when they launch into space on the Soyuz spacecraft. It's got loads of monitors and special instruments. And this exact suit was worn by someone called Helen Sharman, who was the first British person to go into space. Can you remember, what do we call the people that fly rockets into space? That's right. Astronauts. Can you remember how many astronauts can fit into the tiny Soyuz spacecraft? That's right, three. And what do we call it when the flight controllers count backwards from number 10 to number one? That's right, it's the countdown. <laughs> A rocket engine blasts down, it pushes the rocket in the opposite direction up into the sky. This is what we call thrust. So a rocket has to push down to make it go up. How does that work? I'm going to show you how a rocket is pushed one way by thrust force going the opposite way using a homemade rocket. I'm going to use some string, a paper straw, a balloon and a small piece of sticky tape. I'm going to show you how this rocket works, but you mustn't play with string at home without a grown-up. My string is tied from this chair all the way to that chair over there. And can you see how the string goes through the middle of the straw so the straw can move up and down the string? Now I'm going to blow the balloon up about halfway and pinch the end so all the air doesn't come out. <laughs> That'll do. The air inside the balloon is going to be our fuel that will help the balloon rocket to launch. Now I'm going to stick the balloon to the straw with a little bit of sticky tape. 
When I let go, the air is going to come out that way. So which way do you think the balloon is going to travel? Let's find out. Blast off! <laughs> Did you guess right? Wow! Air was forced out of the balloon one way, but the balloon was thrust the opposite way. And this is how thrust works in a rocket too. The rocket engine makes a force that pushes one way and the rocket is thrust in the opposite direction. And when a rocket launches, that way is up. But a balloon isn't very heavy, is it? To find out how a rocket engine makes enough thrust to launch a rocket into space, I think we need to take a closer look. For a space rocket to take off, it needs thrust. The thrust is made with energy from fuel, oxygen and heat. Rockets carry lots of fuel in big tanks and liquid oxygen called oxidizer. Inside a part of the engine called the combustion chamber, the fuel mixes with the oxidizer, which ignites and makes a fire. This turns into a very hot gas called exhaust. The exhaust comes out of the rocket's nozzles very, very fast and pushes down with lots of force and smoke. The downwards thrust from the exhaust pushes the rocket in the opposite direction, lifting it up from the launch pad and off into space. We have liftoff. Here at the Space Centre, they can show us how a rocket engine makes thrust with an experiment. And I've got special permission to watch. This is Charlie. She's one of the experts who works here at the Space Centre. Hey, Charlie. Hi, Maddie. Charlie is specially trained to do this experiment safely and show us how rocket engines work. Firstly, Charlie needs a large tank. This is going to be our combustion chamber and it's where she'll mix the fuel and the oxygen. Right now, Charlie is measuring out a small amount of fuel to go inside the chamber. Next, Charlie needs to mix the fuel with oxygen. On Earth, oxygen is all around us, including inside the chamber. Can you remember what else we need to make our rocket launch? That's right, heat. Remember, Charlie is specially trained to do this. You must never touch or go near matches or fire. Now, I think this next bit is going to happen really quickly. So to make sure we see everything, I'm going to film it using my special slow motion camera. The slow motion means that we can film something that happens really fast, but when we watch it back, it will look much slower. Right, the camera is recording and I'm a safe distance away. Are you ready? Blast off! Wow, that was <laughs> brilliant. Let's see what happened on my slow motion camera. Wow, look how fast the heat quickly burns the fuel and the oxygen inside the chamber. And, <laughs> wow, look at the force of the thrust as it comes out the top of the chamber. That was just a tiny amount of fuel. When a real rocket launches, it quickly burns hundreds of tons of fuel. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Charlie. When a rocket launches, the force pushes the astronauts back into their special seats. This force is made by the speed that the rocket blasts into space. Here we go. This force is called gravitational force or g-force. And the g-force when a rocket launches is very strong. Now, I'm not an astronaut, but there is a way I can show you what g-force feels like here on Earth. And to do that, I've come to a roller coaster! <laughs> a roller coaster can help us learn about G-force because of how fast they move along the tracks. Wow! <laughs> when 
the cars go along the track, the ride moves so quickly that the people on the ride are pushed back into their seats by G-force. The amount of G-force you feel on this ride is more than the amount of G-force an astronaut feels inside a rocket when it takes off. <laughs> To find out what that much G-force feels like for an astronaut, I'm going on the ride. I've been given special permission to film this with my special cameras so you can see it too. Here we go. This ride goes from naught to 60 miles per hour in two seconds. Here we go. Are we going to launch? When's it going to happen? That was brilliant. It was so fast and so much fun. The G-Force, especially right at the start, was amazing. <laughs> that ride was only a minute, but do you remember that astronauts wear special pressure suits when they launch? It's because they feel so much G-Force when a rocket blasts into space. just when astronauts launch into space that they feel g-force when else do you think that astronauts might feel pushed back in their seats that's right astronauts feel g-force when they're coming back to earth to land after the astronauts have finished their mission in space they come back down to earth in the part of the rocket called the descent module it travels at more than 13,000 miles per hour it's so fast it creates lots of g-force for the astronauts inside as well as being able to travel safely at very fast speeds, the descent module needs to be able to slow down so it can land safely too. But to help the descent module slow down, a big parachute opens. A parachute makes a force called drag. This makes the descent module slow down, so there's less g-force for the astronauts to land safely on land or sea. It's been so much fun here at the Space Centre, finding out how rockets launch into space and land back down on Earth. What was your favourite part? Was it seeing the Soyuz spacecraft here at the Space Centre? Or learning how fuel, oxygen and heat are mixed to make the powerful thrust force that makes a rocket take off? Or did you like learning about G-Force and seeing me pushed into my seat on the roller coaster? I like trying out the suit that the astronauts wear and seeing how they land safely back on planet Earth. Rockets are brilliant. And when rockets go into space, we can learn more about space, the other planets and our planet Earth too. Right, it's time for me to take off. Bye. How do we get there?